Okay, I want to lay out a PC board for this uh, little device. And uh, this is the schematic that we'll need. Let me zoom in a bit here. Um, so, passively coupled in, capacitively coupled out. Um, there's a ground connection and a VCC connection, but the VCC connection goes through a uh, inductor radio, radio frequency choke. That's what RFC stands for. And a couple of capacitors on the, uh, on the supply so you don't get any uh, junk going through the supply. Now, they give a kind of an example here. This is uh, at least, anyway, it's, it's, it's an expanded view, right? It's not one-to-one. -one. It's, it's uh, pretty big. But uh, what they do is they use some SMA connectors and they come through with strip line transmission line. Let's, I'll talk about that today, what is strip line transmission line. It goes through the part and then it goes back out through the transmission line. And then the uh, VCC comes in this way. Looks like there's some VIA stitching here. Okay, let's talk about, um, let's talk about transmission lines, okay? So uh, a transmission line that you may be familiar with is a coax, okay? So you have a circle here and a circle here, and uh, there's a center conductor and an outer, outer conductor. Now the radio waves do not uh, go through the copper necessarily. They actually, they actually, uh, They actually go through uh, between the two conductors, okay? It's a waveguide. And um, so the velocity which the radio waves can travel is the speed of light in the medium. These are polypropylene, polyethylene, Teflon, different types of plastics that fill these uh, waveguides. And so that actually travels slower than the speed of light, all right? Um, so uh, if you think about maybe slicing this and opening it up, if you can kind of think of it that way, if you're, so the outside of the coax is ground and the inside of the coax is the signal, right? So let's say that we have a ground plane here and we have it connected to ground. And then we have some, uh, let's say we have our conductor still, okay? And we have flayed this thing open, okay? And now uh, we can say that the plastic, okay, this is, this is kind of the plastic here. The plastic's kind of been laid open as well. So now when the radio waves try to do their thing, they go, they go to the ground, and the field lines will look something like this, okay? And so part of the, part of the field lines will be in air, and, f and part of the field lines will be in this plastic, okay? And it'll try to do something like that. There'll be more of them here than here. It'll close this path, right? They'll, they'll be more centered here, okay? So we can sort of take that idea and expand on it, and now we're going to use a PC board, okay? So now this is going to be a PC board. So this will be the copper on the back side of the board. Instead of the plastic, we're going to be using FR4, which is kind of a plastic imprinted, uh, impregnated into uh, uh, fiberglass. But you can sort of think of it as sort of a plasticky type of thing, but it's the material that the PC boards are made out of. And then instead of using a round conductor, we're going to flatten that out as well. We're going to use a, we're going to use a flat conductor. Okay. So now we're going to have something that looks sort of like, uh, sort of, sort of like this. Okay. There'll be a stripe. Okay. This is called micro, micro strip, micro strip. Okay. And so now again, you have some some of the field lines will go straight down. Some of the field lines will do this type of thing. And there'll be more on the bottom than on the top. Some will go through air. Some will go through the effort four. But this is micro strip, okay? So uh, this is what's being used here. 
you have to know what the thickness of this PC board is, and you have to know what the PC board was made out of, and then you can calculate how wide of a trace do we need, what type of thickness of the board. So everything's a variable, right? The thickness of the board is a, is, is a variable, okay? The material, the FR4, that's a variable. The width of the... Uh, the width of the uh, trace, that's a variable. There's all these variables. Actually, the thickness of the copper, too. How thick is this copper? How thick is this copper? Um, and so all those things are variables, okay? And so let's go uh, onto the computer. I have a program that allows us to sort of take a look at these things and do the calculations for us, okay? And uh, we'll see what we want to do uh, along this regard here. All right, I'm gonna be using a little program here, AppCAD. It's an old, old program, but it's free. Um, and we can go here to transmission lines and we can look to see the different types of transmission lines. Now we just talked about microstrip. Okay, so let's, and we talked about coax also down here. And we talked about a wire over a ground plane. So let's take a look. So we talked about coax. This program, you type in the uh, diameter or the conductor, how big it is, how long it is, what type of material it's made out of, and it does all these calculations and stuff, right? All right, so we did wire over ground plane <clears throat> where we have a wire and there's the thing and maybe it's not in free space, it's in some plastic and stuff, but you could do the calculation here. What we're gonna be talking about today though is microstrip. So microstrip, we're gonna have a PC board so right away it says uh, the dielectric constant of the PC board is one, that's free space. We don't want that. So, and you can come down here to this drop down menu and choose, oops, not choose FR3, FR4. So we're gonna have FR4. Uh, our units are in mils, which is thousands of an inch, that's fine. So a typical PC board is 62 thousandths of an inch. And just for fun, I'm gonna put the width of the, uh, of the uh, stripe here at 100, so that's 0.1 inches. Um, the thickness of the copper, it says it's two mils thick. I don't know, I'm just gonna leave it at the default. Length, it doesn't really matter. And we hit calculate, it says, oh, now you've described a 53 ohm system, okay? So it's not quite 50 ohms yet, it's a little less. So I'm gonna make this 110. I wish it would, calc I wish it would solve it, you kind of have to guess there, 50.5. So you could do this. So you could have a FR60, FR4, 62 mils thick. That's 1.6 millimeters. And you can change the units here. I can say I want to do millimeters. And you'd have to change all the numbers to be millimeters. But we have uh, microns right now. So let's, or mils, let's keep it at mils, okay? And um, so 62 mils is a standard PC board, 1.6 millimeters. And here you would need to put a 110 mil wide trace. That's 0.11 inches. That's really, really wide. That's probably wider than I want because this is a small little part and everything. So one trick we can do is we can make the PC board thinner. We can use 0.8 millimeters, uh, which is 31. And now we're up here at 32 ohms. So we need to make this really, really, we'll need to cut this in half as well. We'll say this is 50. And we'll calculate that. Oh, look at now we're at 52.84 ohms. That's not quite enough. If we make this one say 52, um, yeah, we're getting closer. Let's do 55. Calculate. There we go, 55. So 55 mil trace on a 0.8 millimeter board, 31 mils, uh, will give us a 50 uh, a 50 ohm impedance. So that's great. And um, so we could go to lay out the board and uh, do it this way. So let's take a look at the board that I've laid out. All right. Uh, so here's our schematic. We have a SMA coming in with a capacitor. Uh, it's then going to go through here. So the capacitor values I'm going to use are 0.01, Oops, 0 0.01, and this one will make um, 0 0.01, and this one will make 0 0.01, and this one will make 0.1. 
All right, so those are the values we're going to use. The inductor we're going to use is a 10 microhenry. And uh, the ground, ground symbol is kind of in the way. Let's move over. Okay, so there we go. There's our schematic. Okay, let's look at the layout. All right, so this is getting quite confusing. Let me turn off these here. Let me go turn this off. Let me turn off the silk screens. All right. So um, we're going to have an input uh, SMA. We're going to have an output SMA. We're going to have an input capacitor, output capacitor. We're going to have an inductor and two capacitors, way to connect those. And then right here in the middle, I know it's kind of hard to see. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is our little tiny amplifier. Now the way that this amplifier is, you these little pads are too small. Okay, and if you have a big fat transmission line, it's not gonna it's not gonna fit the 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 distance between these two pads. Okay, so I wanted to make these little traces here pretty thin, and um, so what I'm going to do is a couple tricks here. The first trick I'm going to do is make the board 031. All right. And the next trick I'm going to do is this. Okay. I am going to. All right. So I'm going to do a copper pour as well. And now instead of having um, a strip line architecture, we're going to have something called a coplanar architecture. So we need to go talk about that next. Okay, so we're back here on our little program, and there's something called coplanar waveguide. Coplanar waveguide has a microstrip kind of thing, but it's got copper on both sides as well as on the bottom. You can make these without a ground plane on the bottom, so the only ground reference it has is these two stripes but we're going to have it with a ground plane. So now there's a whole bunch of uh, copper ground around that center conductor, and that makes that center conductor be able to be a little bit thinner, okay? So we're going to have a 31. Uh, we're going to have FR4. Uh, we're going to have a trace width here of let's say 50 again. The distances between, we're gonna do 20, 20 mils between. Um, and you can see here 49.6, okay? So we've gone with uh, a coplanar waveguide design. So let's go back to our layout. And you can see that we have a gap here between uh, the uh, transmission line and the ground plane. So that gap is going to be set. And I calculated it at 20. So the way that you, the way that you specify that is that you uh, go to your ground plane and go to property. So here's the ground plane fill, okay? And you go to the clearance properties. Right now I have it set to 0 0.02 inches. So 20 mils of clearance, and that will set this gap between the transmission line and that. So, and then we can have a 50 mil trace, uh, and we can have uh, the, a kind of a thin, thin thing. So anyway, we made it small now, right? We've made it smaller. All right, so that's what I did. I used a coplanar waveguide, um, and uh, these traces here are 50 mils, 0.05. Um, so it is 50 ohms. It's going to be a 0.6 millimeter board. Let me turn on the silk screen on the front and uh, we will have uh, uh, C1, C2, C3, C4, and L1. And everything is ready to, everything is ready to go. Um, so if we like look at the 3D viewer here, uh, there we go. It'll look something like that. There'll be the input-output capacitors, the, our little device here. Uh, the inductor is going to stick up. It's kind of fat. And uh, the most important thing is on the back, and that is IMSA dog. 
IMSA dog needs to approve the board. Okay, so he'll be on the back. All right, so let's uh, let's get this board built, and uh, let's see if we can uh, make it work. <laughs> 